In this lesson, we'll be discussing names and chemical formulas for binary ionic compounds. And we will be addressing this learning target where we determine names and chemical formulas for ionic compounds. A binary ionic compound is composed of two different ions, a cation and an anion. Typically, metals form cations and nonmetals form anions. When we write the chemical formula for a binary ionic compound, we are always going to put the ions in this order, cation first and then anion second. Remember, there are certain groups on the periodic table that have a common ionic charge. Group 1A plus 1, 2A plus 2, 3A plus 3, and then 5A minus 3, 6A minus 2, and 7A minus 1. These will come in handy when we start writing the formulas for these binary ionic compounds. Even though binary ionic compounds are made of cations and anions, two charged particles, overall ionic compounds are electrically neutral. So if we had a compound composed of aluminum cations and oxygen anions, we would want to write a chemical formula that overall gives us an electrically neutral compound. So if we have two aluminum ions with a plus three charge, that's a positive six. And if we have three oxygen ions with a negative two charge, that's a negative six. Add that together, that's zero. So the formula shows two aluminums, Al2, and three oxygens, O3. The shortcut for determining what the subscripts would be is to take the charges and to crisscross them. Drop the sign, but turn the charges into the subscripts, as seen here. In any chemical formula, we usually do not write the 1 as a subscript, like in NaCl. For ionic compounds, we are always going to write the smallest whole number ratio of ions possible. So this is called a formula unit, instead of molecule, which we use for covalent compounds. So if you look at the subscripts, and you can divide them both by a number to make them a smaller whole number ratio, that's what we're going to do. So in Ca2O2, we take each of the subscripts and divide them by 2, and then we get CaO. In Pb2O4, again, take each of the subscripts and divide them by 2, and then we get PbO2. So let's write some chemical formulas for some binary ionic compounds. We're going to make one of oxygen and sodium. The metal cation always goes first, and the nonmetal anion always goes second. Sodium is in group 1A and has a plus 1 charge. Oxygen is in group 6A and has a negative 2 charge. If I crisscross my charges, I can determine my subscripts. Na, 2, O, 1, but I'm not going to write the 1 as a subscript. In bromine and calcium, my calcium goes first, metal first, cation first, and then my bromine goes second, anion second, or nonmetal second. If I crisscross my charges, CaBr2. And then in the third one, magnesium and sulfur. Magnesium is my metal. That goes first. Sulfur is my nonmetal. That goes second. Crisscross my charges. Mg2S2. But here I can write a smaller whole number ratio. I want to make this one MgS. Now let's talk about how we name binary ionic compounds. We're going to just name the metal, the cation, whatever its name is. And then for the nonmetal, the anion, we're going to put on an IDE ending. A lot like what we do with covalent compounds. So we've got magnesium and fluorine in the first compound. This one would be magnesium fluoride with the IDE ending. Calcium and oxygen, calcium oxide 
with the IDE ending. And calcium and bromine, calcium bromide with the IDE ending. Take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can identify the errors in the following names and chemical formulas. Okay, so in the first one, we should get NABR. Sodium's a plus one and bromine is a minus one. In the second one, the metal uh, should be first and the nonmetal second, just like in all binary ionic compounds, so MgO. In letter C, we should have strontium chloride with that IDE ending. And in letter D, we need again to put the metal first and the nonmetal second, so potassium nitride. All right, now we also have to deal with uh, transition metals in our binary ionic compounds. A transition metal uh, are D block elements. Um, they usually have more than one possible charge. And so group 1A, we say, is always a plus one charge, but we don't have that for our transition metals. So we use Roman numerals in the names of our ionic compounds, and that will tell us what the charge is. We usually only need to know uh, Roman numerals 1 through 5, which are shown here, and match those up with the charge. Now these are only for transition metals, so only for cations. So when we see a name like iron 3 oxide with that Roman numeral 3 in there, that's telling us the charge on the iron. The iron is a transition metal. It has more than one possible charge. So iron has a plus 3 charge. That's what the Roman numeral tells us. And oxygen has a minus 2 charge. Crisscross those charges. Fe2O3 is our chemical formula. Nickel 3 iodide. Nickel 3 means nickel has a plus 3 charge, and iodine has a negative 1 charge. Crisscross those charges. NiI3. Now zinc is a transition metal, but it has only one possible charge, and so you won't see a Roman numeral. You are responsible for knowing the charge on zinc along with the charge on silver and the charge on cadmium. Those are also transition metals but have only one charge. And so they won't, you have a Roman numeral, you need to know what those charges are. So zinc is always a plus two, and chlorine is a minus one. Crisscross those charges, ZnCl2. We're also going to group in tin and lead with the transition metals. Tin and lead are in group 4A. We didn't assign a charge to that group. And so we're going to use a Roman numeral in the names of compounds that have tin and lead. This is probably the trickiest part of binary ionic compounds, determining the name, determining the Roman numeral of the transition metal or tin or lead. You have silver chloride. Silver is a transition metal, but it has only one possible charge. So you do not have to put a Roman numeral. So that one is just silver chloride. With the PBO, we have uh, lead for PB, right? And so that is going to need a Roman numeral. So I'm going to leave a spot for it. And we'll put a Roman numeral right there. And then the oxygen is going to be oxide. Now oxygen has a negative 2 charge, so to give a neutral compound, that must mean that the lead has a plus 2 charge to balance that out. And remember, the Roman numeral is the charge, so I need a Roman numeral 2 right there, lead to oxide. Here we have manganese. It is a transition metal with more than one possible charge. We're going to need a Roman numeral. Iodide is the other part of the compound. The iodine has a negative one charge, and there are two of them. So total, that's negative two. To balance out that charge, the manganese must be a plus two. And so we'll take that and put that in as our Roman numeral. And finally, we've got uh, copper. And sulfur, sulfide, but we need a Roman numeral here. Copper is a transition metal. Uh, sulfur is a negative 2 charge, 
And then to balance that out, we must have um, a positive 2. But we have two coppers. And so each one of those coppers must be a plus 1. So that is my Roman numeral. So hopefully now you know how to write names and chemical formulas for binary ionic compounds, including those that have transition metals.